Hey guys, Ninja here with part 3 of my block bench tutorial series. It's been a long time and I apologise for that, but there's actually a silver lining as there have been a bunch of updates to block bench, especially in the paint panel. Like the previous videos, this will be a basic tutorial for beginners who are starting to use block bench to create voxel or Minecraft models. The process that I will be covering today will start with colour picking, followed by colour blocking, shading and adding some material definition. This will be the technique that I used when I first started with block bench so I think it's an easy technique to pick up if you're not someone who has much experience with pixel art or with modeling and painting in general. This is an approach which can give semi-realistic textures for your models, at least as realistic as pixel art gets, but they won't be particularly stylized and like I said previously they, they should be pretty simple to learn. We will be working on this husky wolf that I've got here which we have been making over the previous videos and here are some of the reference images that I'll be using which I've literally just found from Google. I'm most likely going to be doing a grey husky, maybe a bit of brown in there as well to give it some colour. Um, but as you can see, fairly simple. It's just got a slightly darker back, white front, white legs, white tail, uh, very fluffy. So I'm gonna have to try and bring that across in the pixel art. And of course, lovely bright blue eyes. So without further ado, let's get into it. So to start with, I'm gonna either press create texture this little button here or I'm going to right click in the box on the bottom left of your paint tab and I'm going to create a texture. I'm going to name this something appropriate for of this I'm going to name it husky and I do want this to be based off a template. This will basically generate your UV which is what maps out where the texture goes on your model and it will make sure it fits this model here automatically. So I'm just going to confirm that. I do want to compress the template because it makes the file size a lot smaller. If you're working with Minecraft especially, a power of two size is very important. It's not necessary anymore, but it is recommended. Keep multi texture occupancy basically means if I have the front leg here and I texture on it, if the other leg is connected, it essentially means that if I paint on the front left leg, it will paint on the front right leg. But I'll get into that a bit more later. Right now, however, I just want to keep that on. The resolution is obviously regarding Minecraft resolution, so it depends how, what block size you're working with. So I'm just doing an almost 16 by 16 block size, so I'm going to keep the resolution 16. You may find for smaller models it may be easier to up this in order to get the right amount of detail. So I'm just going to confirm that. And here you go. Here's your texture map. You can see a little cursor on screen about where I'm painting. You can see if I just paint randomly over here or paint in random different parts of the model. Down here you'll see the file name which is Husky and here's a little icon for it and it's 64 by 64 pixels but you can ignore that for now it's not really relevant it won't be important for you so like I said before I always start with color blocking what this simply means is I take the different parts of the dog and I make it down to its very simplistic colors so for this this area around here I would class as dark brown then a bit of light brown around the top of the legs maybe some even lighter brown around here and then the face and the bottom and the bottom of the tail and the bottom of the legs I will count as white so first I need to choose the color I want so let's start with the dark brown I like to go dark to light usually I'm going to choose an orangey color because that's how you find brown I want it uh, a little bit saturated but not too much so to actually give you a quick rundown about how this color picker works you go from low saturation to high saturation which just means how bold your colour is, how much colour pigment is there. So obviously if it's on the left side it's going to be very close to grey slash white and then as you go across to the right it's going to be a lot bolder and a lot brighter the colour that you want. Now similar to how left to right is saturation, up to down revolves around the brightness. So at the top you have white and at the bottom you have black. That's simply the amount of black that is in this colour. So if I wanted a brown colour it's going to be quite dark, it's going to have a little bit of brown but it's not going to be all the way so it's probably going to be around here if I'm going for quite a brown husky so now I'm just going to use the paint bucket there are multiple fill modes for the paint bucket you've got face which will just do that one face of the cube which you click on or I could do a cube color which will color the entire cube that color I could do connected colors this basically means that if I wanted to color just this lighter pink I could click it and it would but if I had something like this where on the same face you have this light pink in two different sections it won't affect this light pink only the area that is connected. Conversely if I use the colors option it will find all the colors of this exact code hex code 
code and it will color it the dark brown. For now, I'm just using the cube though because I just want to make sure that I have my top cubes being dark. I'm just going to go through roughly and do that. Obviously, I know not all of this is dark brown, but this is how I start off. Then you have the face and the snout being particularly white as well as the lower legs. So I'm just gonna go in and do that. Another good tip is to add mirror painting. It will basically do whatever's on this side to the opposite side, providing they are exact copies of each other, which they are. Now I'm gonna make the nose, which is gonna be probably a bit more of a red color. So I'm gonna shift the hue up a bit to the red section. Still pretty dark though, I think for now. We'll go with that. I'll make the ears quite dark. And this upper leg here, I think I want kind of a mid color of a brown so with that I'm just going to make add a little bit more saturation maybe and a little bit more white so now I have all the cubes covered now I can go in and individually into each of these cubes make sure that the barriers and the borders of the different colors are correct so like we see here the light is all around this main body so I just want to pick that up into that like so I'm making it a little bit jagged because it is fur I do want it to be a little bit rough for now it will help as well later. This entire underside has got to be this lighter colour. So I'm going to use the paint bucket. I'm going to use the face again. This front area here. I'm going to turn the size of the brush up a little bit to help me colour cover more space. Yes, that looks about right. Now I'll make sure I do the back side as well. Do you see how easy this is with the mirror tool? Look, I can just colour it so easily because it's copying it across the middle. Something I will just quickly go over for the brush. You have a default size of one, which is obviously just one pixel. Two, which is two pixels. Three, etc, etc. As they go up, they'll get circular and circular and circular. Opacity is just how transparent your paint is. So if I had a really low opacity, my one would barely make any difference. Like you can barely see a difference. If it was like a middle opacity around 60, it would come more and then 100 would fully put this color down. Softness is something that I will talk about in a little bit when we get to actual shading. Let's first finish off this color blocking though. I want one more mid-tone between these two colors. Let's make it a bit lighter. Yeah, something like that will work. I'm just gonna go around, make sure I get all the sides. Move it on the underside as well. You can still see it copying it across to the other side. I can easily hide these layers just by clicking the eye tool. So I make sure I get under these joints as well, just in case they come visible when animating. Just keep on covering it. I'm also going to do the top of the tail a bit, because it's slightly darker on the top than it is below. Now I need to do the face a little bit. So there's clear white areas around the eyes and around the chin and the cheeks. So I want to make sure I carry this across and it's actually white down the front as well. So I need to not forget about that. Hmm, and then look, you can see the underside's a bit white as well. So I want to keep on carrying that down actually. And it goes down the back of the legs. Remember to always look at reference images. They're really, really helpful for things like this, especially if it's a real creature, which, you know, you're going to look at it and if it doesn't look right, if something's wrong, you're going to be able to tell because, you know, you know what that creature should look like. So for dogs, which everyone knows what a dog looks like, you need to make sure you use those references. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that color blocking. Now I'm gonna look at the details and make sure I've got those down. So especially around the face, up the shoulder could have a bit more color. On the whole, it looks like a husky. I can even mark where the eyes are right now. So they're obviously gonna be blue. So I'm gonna shift this hue down to a blue. Very saturated, a little bit light, a bit of white in there as well. If I just look at a reference image, might be a bit too light right now. I might wanna have it be two pixels. And then as long as I make sure that I shade around this, so like around the eyes a bit darker, it will stand out better, but I'll do that later. So it's pretty much marked out. There's still a few things left to do, like there's a bit of pink in the ears, but I'll leave that to later on. Next in the sage is blending. So to blend, very simply, I just take a brush. I move the size up to two or three. I turn the opacity all the way down to maybe around about 30 and the softness all the way up. And this is actually quite fun because you can go kind of wild with it and then work on adding back in the details later on. But what I want to essentially do with this technique is blend this color into this color and this color into like make everything nice and blended together. So all I'm doing is I'm using Alt or I could just use the color picker. I like using Alt because it's easier and quicker and I would advise you guys also use that. I'm not sure what it is for IMAX and stuff, but I know for PCs and PC keyboards it's Alt. So that's what I'm using. So I'm just going to click on the color colors I want to blend and I'm just gonna draw my mouse over the top 
and then I'm going to keep on picking from this middle and you can see it's created a nice blended colour. I'm going to do the same here. I'm just going to pick Alt, keep on picking the middle colour and keep on going over. So you can see that's a lot more blended now. I'm going to do the same for the rest of the body. I'm just going to keep on going. And this is the easiest way I found to get a good blended base. Sometimes you might get these green tones in between, we don't want that. So when you do start to notice these green tones, make sure when you're alting and clicking on them, you add a little bit more colour to them. That will just bring it back a little bit. Just a bit more colour, it will bring life back into those greens. This white is going to be pretty hard to blend, but I don't want to completely blend it because I'm going to do something later which will have a bit of a harsher divide because you can very clearly see there's a line here. It's not very blended. So I'm not going to focus too much on blending the brown and the white quite yet, but I am going to do a little bit. For bigger models, you might want to use a bigger brush and for more detailed areas, you might want to use a smaller one. Over the top, I'm just adding a bit more colour because obviously it's the top, so more light is going to hit it, at least in a normal setting. So when you've roughly got what you want, just make sure to get all the little bits and all the sides, especially the undersides, easily can be forgotten about. Let me just unhide the tail, make sure I get that too. So now I've done that, what I'm going to do is go into areas that should have shadow cast on them and add some darker tones. For clarity, this will be areas around the legs, around these few pixels here. This is where some shade is going to be from the leg, be back here as well the front down here around the neck where the head joins might have to have an even darker color there for this i'm just using a single brush which i still have at 30 percent opacity so it's not too strong i have to give it a few clicks for it to work again just alting where i need to to make sure i pick up the right colors now a dog is fairly simple in terms of shading there's not an awful lot you have to do make sure you get under the tail it's definitely gonna have a shaded spot as you advance, you'll find that shading and lighting gets more complicated than just this. Uh, you have to consider direction and intensity of light as well as colour of light. But for this, we're just presuming there is just natural sunlight in the area, so it's pretty much fully illuminated. So now we have those kind of details, we can go back. We can see that around here, like I said, there's some shadow right around here under the neck. So we seem to have smashed that. Now I'm going to add some more definition to the shoulder. As you can see here, there's a little bit of shoulder which is a bit lighter up here, just marking the shape. To do that quite subtly, I'm just gonna take a lighter color and just lighten up this area a bit. For this, it is only pixels, so it can be quite subtle, but it brings across the same shape. Now I'm gonna have a look at the back leg, and because a back leg is round, to do round shapes, what I typically do is take a darker color than what's on here, and I mark around some of the edges. It really depends on the shape, but for this, I really want this top area here to look round. So I actually darken it and it will make it look like this edge here is going inwards away from me and maybe this isn't the clearest or best example to show this with but just adding a little bit of color to the corners a little bit of a darker color can make it seem more spherical than it actually is because obviously these are just cubes they're not going to look particularly circular but there are some shading tricks that you can use to do that same up here this upper edge around here and down here just gives a little bit of an illusion and tricks the eye a bit I want to do that for the bit of the front leg as well so once I have that I would usually look at muscles and see where I can mark that I did that a little bit with the shoulder but as the husky is so fluffy it doesn't really have very clear muscles so I can kind of avoid doing that for this one. Now I want to get to marking these white areas a lot clearer, kind of start going in on more detail. So I want the brown colour up to around about here, I want a slightly darker white colour for the connections and maybe a little bit just around the general foot areas that can give a little bit of noise. I'm going to add that around the base to just kind of give the impression of fur or that this isn't entirely flat. Okay so this front leg is basically done so I'm going to move on to the front. You can see here in this picture that it has a bit of a jagged front and lots of huskies actually have this. They kind of go in and then out and then smoothly round to the face following right now. So that's the kind of thing that I would like to replicate a little bit. For that I'm going to have the white come onto this front chest a little bit, front legs a little bit as well. So this is it coming out a bit, then it's going to come back in, up brown to the face. I'm fairly happy with that, just going to bring some lighter brown tones in. So I kind of like how that's looking at the moment, so I'm just going to continue shading it, make this white a bit cleaner. Then obviously it goes underside and it comes up here a bit just tappity tapping. <laughs> now I'm onto the back foot, make sure I get the inside of the legs. Do that by easily hiding one. 
and because I have mirror on I know it's going to copy across to the other side if you see the inside the legs going to have a lot of shadow from the top and the underbelly so I want to make sure I have that here making the underside a little bit dirty as well this is a husky probably likes to play around I'm turning off the mirror painting when I'm doing the underside otherwise it's completely symmetrical and it can be it doesn't look very natural especially for a dog's fur so that's why I've taken this off so I can kind of just go a little bit freehand on this I tend to do the undersides to a decent quality but it's not something I focus on so much because it's not really seen as much in Minecraft let's be honest Great, so after I've done that, I will just make sure everything's shown again. Have a look around. I think most of those white spaces look okay. I wanna add a little bit more variation to this neck area, a little bit of shadow under the head. Another thing which I do, which I found quite helpful, when adding shadows, what I like to do is add some more color, add some more saturation. So right now, this is very light, but if I wanted to add more shadow, I would generally increase the color a bit, make it a bit darker, because that's more realistic stick to real life like shadows don't instantly go gray or black they still have a lot of color in them and it will make it look darker just by shifting the color a little bit another thing you can do is color shift this all depends on the color of your shadows will be casted which also depends on light so it's not something I'm going to cover in this session but it may be worth looking up in your own time if you're interested more about color theory so you can already see I'm using this slightly more saturated color and it's bringing in a lot more of an interesting tone otherwise it just looks a bit gray and washed out just add a little bit more color it makes it far more interesting so I'm just going to add a little bit of this around especially in the darker areas so I I don't lose that intensity. I don't want my model to look washed out, do I? Make sure I do the little toesy woesies. For that, I'm just gonna use a dark color. I'll just do three toe beans, because that's all I really have space for. <laughs> now I'm gonna look at the face area, because I haven't really covered that much yet. It's gonna have a bit of darker fur towards the brown, where the brown is mixing in a bit. The snout's gonna have a bit of color on the underside, especially. So now I'm gonna look at the nose. A husky nose tends to be quite dark, quite black, uh, unless it's a brown husky, in which case it's a little bit lighter, has a little bit of red tone in there. So let's do that. Let's just play around a little bit. I'm gonna turn off my mirror painting because this is only two pixels and I want them to be slightly different. And obviously if I mirror when I have two centrally located pixels, then they're just gonna copy onto each other, you know? But they also have a little bit of a brown mouth from the looks of it. And their actual outer, like I guess the inner the lips I guess you could call it are actually quite dark as well so I'm gonna try and replicate that but I don't have much space because this is quite a low resolution but I'll have a go so I want to have the area underneath be a little bit brown maybe it'll be a bit of a lighter brown actually and then darker around these areas maybe something like that Okay, I think that works. Something you shouldn't be afraid of is contrast though. Right now the gradients are fairly subtle, but having a little bit more contrast and different values can actually make pixel art a lot more interesting and dynamic to look at. I'm gonna look at doing the eyes now. So I know that I wanted two pixels before. Let's see how that works still. I still think that can work. I'm just gonna add a little bit more definition to the face to make the white stand out a little bit more, make it a bit more obvious. Huskies actually have quite dark spots around their eyes but I feel like if I do this he's gonna make him look like he has mascara on <laughs> you know what he can wear whatever he damn well wants so let's just give him darkness around his eyes why not now it just looked like a classic female Minecraft character with eyelashes. So now I have most of the base textures done. I've managed to shade and block color and blend these shades together. Now is where I would usually add a bit more texture. This can be quite hard with low resolutions, especially like this. So I won't focus too much on it, but I'll kind of show you what I would do. So here already we have quite a rough stir, but I, what I would do is I'd pull these dark colors down a little bit so then you have the dark color going kind of zigzaggy like this and it just kind of replicates what fur does you have little mats and areas of darkness and then areas of lightness like you'll see here here's an example you have a little crease in here which is darker and then lighter again here you have these clumps of darker which kind of spring up a little bit into this mid-tone if you can kind of see and they have a very kind of jagged kind of layered texture to them which is what I'm trying to replicate here but it is quite hard at such a small resolution the fur especially is fluffy so right now it's looking a bit flat so I just want to make sure that I bring in some variation I'm just going to take the light color pull it up take some dark color pull it down just keep on going like that pulling it up a little bit pulling the dark color down a bit until I get something I'm quite happy with I'm going to create these kind of layers of fur these little clumps 
like this is a clump here, this is a clump here. We'll just make this tail a little bit more interesting. Have a little check over. As a general rule, like I said earlier, I usually start block texturing, block shading even, then I will do blending of those colors and then I will add details like muscles and shadow. And then at the very end, it's the last thing I do, I will add texture. So at the end, I like to do a good check over just to see if I have any other issues. I'm fairly happy with how this has all turned out so far. The last thing I'll do is I'll go over all the joints. So in animating, what may happen is this layer here may rotate forward and in doing so it may uncover some pixels that I didn't realize would be on show same if I move it backwards like I didn't realize that these two colors would be on show originally because in the original position you can't see them so what I like to do is I like to hide all the joints and all the additional bones and just make sure the underneath is covered as well I also like to make sure I've done all the sides as they're very easy to miss make sure I get the tops and the bottoms now I've tested the top of the leg I'll test the bottom of the leg here you can see there's some more this may seem a bit tedious and sometimes um, you don't have to do all the sections like I won't be doing the sections between this front chest and here because I know that's never ever going to be on show but it's also good to be thorough just in case you don't want some non-textured areas showing during the animation because it doesn't look very good of course this isn't such a big deal if you're not animating it but it's always good to be thorough and I think with that I'm just about done with this texture as you can see, it's a little bit messy. On the whole, it communicates that this is a husky. It's a brown husky. You can clearly see it's quite furry. There's a lot of noise and texture going on in there. Something that is worth noting for the style is that there's a huge range of colors on this dock. Like there's a lot of whites and a lot of browns and all of these colors, as I pick them, they're all different to each other. This is fine if that's the kind of style you're going for. And if you want a lot of different colors, a lot of different shades, then that works. But for me personally, I like to use a very limited palette these days for my style it really depends on what you're going for another thing that i wanted to show you guys quickly was an example where i've used this in one of the everbloom games maps which are now on the marketplace this is from night school this is where i've used this technique before this is done quite early on when I was first developing kind of my style and kind of figuring out how to texture. So this is one of the earliest textures I did. I'm very happy with how it turned out. There are a few things I would have changed now if I was to go back and do it again, but it's a good example of where I've used the kind of technique that I've been explaining during this video. Here's another quite cool example I have. This is a T-Rex I did for Dinosaur Dig. As you can tell, it's pretty much just blacks and greys. I've added a little bit of colour in to make the bone a bit more lifelike. It's a little bit yellowed usually, but there's still not an awful lot of colour and it could do with a little bit more yellow tones to make it more realistically bones, but I quite liked the shading on this. Another tip which I thought I'd point out, which is quite important, is the use of paints. This isn't something I got to cover on the Husky, but paints are great for making very thin little bits of texture. So you can see here, this is a cube, but it only has one size of texture on, which is this side here. The other sides don't have anything on. All I've done to get to that point is I've used the eraser at a full opacity, no softness, and I've just carved out the shape I want, as you can see I'm doing here. And then I can easily just draw back on top with my paintbrush. There's always a handy little tip for adding extra details without them looking really thick. So the spines in the back here are not meant to be very thick and I think they just look a lot better when they're just single panes. It can be really effective to add details like teeth and hair and plenty of other examples and it's definitely worth playing around with. For this final example, I have Appa from Avatar The Last Airbender. This is something that I've worked on on my streams recently. You can see I've used a very limited palette here. This is one of the styles I was talking about earlier and it's a style that I've kind of been developing a little bit more as this is the kind of direction I'd like to go in for my textures. I've really used a very limited palette. So here you can see I've used one, two, three, four colors for all of this kind of main body area and the legs. I used an additional color sometimes for the shadow, but on the whole, four or five main colors for each section, which I'm quite happy with because I think I've communicated a fair amount of depth there and I've made it really look like it's really furry whilst keeping to a really limited palette, which I give a really unique style, I think. It's a style that I've admired a lot. So I'm really happy with how I'm progressing with it. Again, I've used some more panes around the front for the fringe. 
and for the little beard. Uh, the same goes for this top bit and the horns. They only use around about four or five colors as well. This includes any shadow, any highlights, as well as texture. So I've managed to combine that all in a very small amount of color space. But yeah, here's the finished dog. I hope you like him. If you guys have any more questions, be sure to put it in the comments below. Make sure to stay up to date with us on Twitter and YouTube. You can find me on Twitter at NinjamasterMC and you can find Everbloom Games on the Minecraft Marketplace as well as Twitter at Everbloom Games. Make sure to put notifications on if you want more updates uh, regarding Blockbench and any more tutorials. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you guys.